Hello, welcome to EHA Today. Uh, I am Dr. Benjamin Abella from the University of Pennsylvania. I'm also the discussant at the American Heart Association of an important investigation. With me today is Dr. Nicholas Nielsen from Lund University in Sweden. Uh, Dr. Nielsen is the lead author of what is known as the TTM trial, or Targeted Temperature Management Trial, for post-arrest care. I'm really excited to have a conversation with Dr. Nielsen today about his work. It's a really important study. And Dr. Nielsen, perhaps you could tell us a little bit in general for our listeners what the study aimed to look at and what your central findings were. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, Ben. Uh, the, the, this trial started out in uh, 2010, um, and we had planned it for about one and a half years um, after assessing the evidence for hypothermia. We had used hypothermia for about uh, five years in uh, Scandinavia at that time. And we assessed the evidence once again before embarking on a new project to learn more about uh, temperature management and post-cardiac arrest care. And after assessing the evidence, we realized that there was still uh, knowledge gaps, um, and especially for the general cardiac arrest patient. Um, so we have uh, designed a trial where we uh, looked at two temperatures, 33, which is the standard temperature, and 36 degrees, which is a higher temperature, closer to normal temperature. Um, and we chose 36 because it was close to normal, but it was anyway below febrile temperatures, uh, which is what you commonly see in the cardiac arrest patients. So we have investigated these two groups. We have randomized 950 patients in uh, 10 countries. 36 hospitals have participated. And we ran the trial for uh, two and a half years, and the main results that we uh, will reveal here at the American Heart Association is that uh, there were no difference in survival or neurological function uh, when we assessed that for uh, six months after. And just to clarify for our listeners, when you say 33 was your, uh, you know, the standard temperature, um, standard meaning what has been uh, established in the AHA and ILCOR guidelines yes. for post-arrest cardiac arrest care, is that, is that right? That is correct, yeah. Right. And, and so one of the questions that comes to mind, it's really a striking result. Um, I, I fear as a practitioner of post-arrest care and very involved in, in research in the area that this trial may be misconstrued. And what I mean to say is, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, 36 was not normothermia as defined by HACA and Bernard trials of 2002. Um, and you actually tightly controlled the temperature at 36. So perhaps you could tell us a little more about the importance of that issue. Yeah, uh, one of the main, uh, not problems, but uh, features of the previous trials is that they, they compared hypothermia to 33 degrees with no temperature control. So the patient- No temperature control whatsoever. So they develop fever. I know in the Bernard trial, I think they uh, used uh, medications to, to keep down the temperature, but in the Hock trial, they didn't. And you can see on the graphs from that uh, presentation, or from that publication, that they really developed fever in the control group. So we tightly controlled, both these groups in this trial were tightly controlled to the target temperature that we set. They were maintained equally, they were sedated, they were on devices to, to keep the temperature strict. And uh, we also continued to treat fever the first days after the intervention period. So the first 72 hours after cardiac arrest, we aimed to lowering the fever in both groups. Right, and I was very struck looking at your temperature curves. You had very tight temperature control in both groups. In the 36 degree arm, uh, I saw very, very few cases of even 36, 8, 37. I mean, it was very tightly controlled. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important for our listeners to know that this was not a reappraisal of whether post-arrest TTM was relevant or not, but rather a dosing of TTM. Is that, is that a fair statement, you think? Absolutely. Uh, we cannot say anything in this trial about what would happen if we had uh, not controlled the temperature in the upper arm. So it's an absolutely new design uh, and a new uh, question that we have posed. Yes, so, so uh, TTM is still the standard of care post-arrest. The only question now is what's the right dose? Uh, so that lends me to my next question. Uh, what next? Do you think that um, 36 is the final answer? Or after all, some of the animal studies show dramatic improvements in outcome with 30 or 31 or even lower temperatures. Do you think maybe comparing to 33, you just didn't sort of push the system hard enough? What do you think of that? 
I don't know. Um, I know that uh, when we started to think about the trial, uh, we had, uh, honestly, we had uh, problems to, to discuss this because everyone was so mindset about 33 that that was the final answer. So I think one of the main messages with this trial is that we actually don't know and we should try to work in large uh, networks because uh, you need many patients, many sites and many countries to answer these questions. You cannot work in, uh, in, uh, in your own hospital and try to answer a question. That's uh, not possible. So I think that we should work together and uh, use this trial as an icebreaker <laughs> and to, uh, to really try to uh, find out what is the best care for these patients in terms of uh, in terms of temperature management, but also in terms of intensive care in general. Yeah, I agree. There's so much more work to be done in this area. Another question, of course, is duration. Um, if we think of post-arrest temperature management, there's sort of, in my mind, two aspects to dosing. One is depth of temperature and one is duration of care. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about duration of temperature management? Yeah, that was uh, initially uh, what we thought that we should start with. Uh, but when we assessed the evidence, I thought, actually, the evidence is not that good that we thought. And we didn't know which temperature. It was just uh, uh, taken from the animal bench into the uh, to the sick, uh, multi-morbid um, um, uh, patient uh, with with older patients, not comparable to animal experience. So um, then we thought it was we had to start with the the depth before we could go on with duration, because duration will imply that you keep the patient on the ventilator, you sedate them more you probably have more side effects of prolonged uh, temperature management. So I thought that was the wrong way to go uh, to start with. Got it. Uh, two rather uh, technically oriented questions. Was the cooling performed with one kind of device or different sorts of devices? After, after all, clinically, there are a number of commercial devices available yeah. to provide TTM care. Yeah, absolutely. No, we had, uh, we had uh, no, uh, no demands on what type of machine that the, the sites could use. They could use any uh, commercially available equipment, either surface cooling or intravascular cooling. Uh, both groups had to uh, be kept with uh, feedback systems. So we didn't allow uh, any non-device uh, temperature management. Uh, it was about 25% that had intravascular device and 25% sur uh, 75% surface, surface surface device. One other um, methodologic question that many listeners are often curious about with these arrest trials where consent is difficult. How did you manage the ethics of this trial with consent, proxy consent? What was the process there? It, it differed between countries and that's one of the, we had about 87% uh, inclusion rate of the patients that we screened. And the main exclusion criteria was actually patients in one separate country where we had to have consent from the relatives before we could start the process. Uh, but in the majority of the countries, we had a delayed uh, process. So you could start the intervention and then you could ask the relatives later. In some of the countries, we also had a system where it was all left to the patients that woke up. So we did not have to approach the relatives. So it was di very different. And one final question. You're a physician. If a patient, if a patient came in tomorrow in your uh, setting needing post-arrest care, would you call them to 33 or would you maintain them at 36? Uh, since no one at uh, my hospital knows about the results of the trial yet, if the patient comes in tomorrow, I think it will be 33 uh, And a month degree. from now or a year from now? Yeah, we will discuss that in the group so everyone can assess the evidence and uh, that we have a common statement. But I think uh, 36 is a, is a very good temperature. You can uh, have the patient probably a bit shorter on the ventilator. You can uh, assess if they are starting to awake or earlier. Yeah, and and easier management in general. Easier management in general. You don't have the diuresis or the electrolyte uh, problems. Sure. And probably less pneumonia. Understood. Well, Nicholas, it was a real pleasure talking to you, and uh, I hope our listeners have enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you.